Hello everybody. Today we are going to talk about the concept of personality. Personality is a word which intrigues everybody. Who are you? What makes you who you are as a person? We all carry different personality. We all use personality. We all use the word personality in one way or the other. But very few of us are able to understand the actual meaning of the word personality. We all are of different personality types. Somebody may be bubbly, somebody may be reserved, somebody may be sensitive, somebody may be thick skinned. In any kind of society, in any type of society, people have different traits such as skin, color, height and weight among the other different features. They have different types of personality because individuals are not alike. No two individuals are alike. So no two people can have the same kind of personality. There are psychologists who have been trying to understand and explain the concept of personality. And they have been and they are trying to conceptualize personality as individual differences in the way people tend to think, feel and behave. These three are the catch words in defining and understanding personality. How you think, how you feel and how you behave. Personality is the sum of physical and mental abilities and capabilities. Again, we need to understand it's a cusp of the physical abilities, it's a cusp of mental abilities. It's not only doing only abilities, it's having a measure of capabilities also. Personality is the sum of total behavior of individual and it covers both the covert and the overt behavior, the interest, attitudes and the dispositions. The word covert and overt again needs to be understood. Covert would be something which is discreet, which may not be visible to everybody and overt is something which is exhibited in the behavior. So that's something which is observed by other people. So personality is comprising of both, of our inner self also and of the outward portion which is being exhibited to the whole world. Now coming to the origin of the word personality, it stems from the Latin word persona. Now what did this word mean? Persona means it's like a theoretical mask which was used by the people so that they cover their face while they are performing in order to either project different roles or exhibit different characters or disguise their own identities. So personality is stemming from this word persona. Personality as a field of psychology or as a field of study, as a separate field of study began with Hippocrates who was a physician in ancient Greece. One needs to again understand Hippocrates was a physician but he talked about personality. So personality is not only about the physical capabilities or the physical understandings, it's encompassing the psychological aspects also. Some of the notable conceptions of personality are number one, personality refers to the relatively enduring characteristics that differentiate one person from another and that lead people to act in a consistent and predictable manner both in different situations and over an extended period of time. So one needs to understand it's differentiating you from one individual from another individual. It's a characteristic pattern of behavior which becomes predictable over a period of time. You may behave differently in different situations but once we see it over a period of time there are consistencies in your behavior patterns. Personality is also defined as the enduring or the lasting patterns of behavior and thought across time and situation. So again in this definition also one can see that there is an aspect of time and there is an aspect of situation both. Gordon Allport, a famous psychologist, he defined personality as a dynamic organization inside the person of the psychophysical systems that create the person's characteristic pattern of behaviors, thoughts and feelings. So there are three things, behavior, thoughts and feelings inside the person. So it's talking about inside the person, things are moving inside the person but it's getting exhibited in the form of behavior, thought and feelings. Again coming down to another aspect, there is no single definition which is acceptable to all the personality theorists because they all are looking at this word from their own eyes, from their own viewpoints. But still we can say that personality is a pattern of relatively permanent traits and unique characteristics that gives both consistency and individuality to a person's behavior. Consistency, individuality. One person is getting differentiated from the another person and in one's own behavior, one is consistent over a period of time. This definition was given by Feast and Feast in the year 2009. 
Coming down to the next aspect, we need to understand the different components of the personality. Now, these components of the personality, they are going to come or they can be understood from these different definitions which we have already discussed. Some of the fundamental characteristics of the personality include, number one, consistency. There is generally a recognizable order and regularity to the behaviors. We, as we discussed, there is a pattern, there is a predictability which is associated with your behavior. One at point, after a point of time, it becomes predictable how would that person react in that particular situation. Essentially, people act in the same ways or similar ways, if not same, in similar ways in different kinds of situations. Personality arises from within the individual and it remains fairly consistent throughout the life. So that is one feature which is talking about consistency. The second is the psychological and the physiological features. So personality is an amalgamation of psychological and physiological features. Both of them are working together. Personality is a psychological construct, but the research suggests that it is influenced by the biological processes and the needs also. So one cannot say that psychology is only a psychological construct. It is being influenced by the biological processes and needs. When we are hungry, we behave in a different manner. So it's that biological need which is making us impact or which will making us react in a different manner. Thirdly, it impacts behaviors and actions. Personality does not just influence how we move and respond in our environment. It also causes us to act in certain ways. So there is this word cause. It is leading to our behavior. Our personality is guiding our behavior. Our personality is dictating our behavior. The next feature is the multiple expressions. Personality is displayed in more than just behavior. It can also be seen in our thoughts, feelings and close relationships and other social interactions. We may behave differently with somebody whom we are very close to and we may behave differently with somebody whom we are having a distant kind of relationship. But that's visible. Now the next feature is the social origin. Though we are talking about the personality, though we are saying that it's an individual thing, it's a psychological construct, it's something inside the person, but one needs to understand that how does this personality develops? It develops during the process of socialization in the culture of a specific group or the society. So there is definite impact of the society on how the individual's personality shapes. We are not saying that society dictates or socialization dictates the kind of personality you are going to develop, but definitely it has influence on the kind of personality you are going to turn into or you are going to shape into. The next important aspect of personality is, which needs to be understood by all of us is because personality as a topic is interesting to everybody, be it a teacher, be it a psychologist, be it a special educator, be it anybody who is interacting with people has somewhere down the line they are interested in the word personality. Now there are different kinds of theories which are being given to explain how does this personality evolves and how does this personality is understood. So there are different schools in psychology which have influenced and led to the development of different theories of personality. Now some of these major perspectives which are guiding the different kinds of theories include number one the type theories, number two the trait theories, Number three, the psychoanalytic perspective. Number four, behavioral perspective. And number five, the humanist perspective. Each of these perspectives on personality tends to describe the different patterns in personality. They are looking at personality from their own point of view. So each of these perspectives, they may at times seem to be at cross with each other, but they all are guiding or they all are contributing to how we understand about the personality. They are talking about how these patterns form, how people differ from one individual to another and how people differ on an individual level. So these theories of personality are able to explain to us and are able to uh, enable us to understand the different kinds of personalities we come across in our daily life. Coming down, first is the type theories of the personality. Now type theories are probably the earliest perspectives on personality. These were the theories which suggested that there are a limited number of personality types which are related to biological influences. 
this is the time when Hippocrates was there, when the first theory of personality or the first type of personality perspective was given and they talked about that our behavior is related to the biological influences. So, heredity or the biology was stronger as compared to any other aspect of environment or anything else. So, biological approaches that means the type theories they focused on the role of genetics and the brain in shaping personality. So, they gave a lot of credit to heredity. They explained personality on the basis of physique and temperament. Now, temperament refers to the emotional aspect of the personality like changes in moods, tensions, excitement, anxiety, the things which intrigue us, the things which excite us. So, a type is simply a class of individual which is said to share a common collection of certain kinds of characteristics. So, we call this person is of this type, this person is of this type. Now, there are different theories under this category which are focusing on type theories of personality or which come under the ambit of type theories of personality. The number one was given by William Sheldon. This is one of those most recognized or most accepted theory of personality. He proposed a theory of personality which correlated temperament and body type. He has divided the people into three types, endomorph, ectomorph and mesomorph. So, he is talking about how your physique is and how your behavior is. So, he is combining both and he has seen that the people are of three types. The next one was given by Ernest Kreshmer. He attempted to correlate physique and character. From his studies on mental patients, he found that certain body types are associated with particular kinds of mental disorders. He has classified personalities into four types, pykinic type, asthenic type, athletic type and diasplastic type. So, he was working on the people with mental uh, problems or mental patients and from his study he was able to understand that they are personality of different types and that is related to how they are going to be in their mental behavior. There are other type theories of personality also like uh, the one given by who is working on this area that how the body fluid is connected to the kind of personality which you are having. This was probably one of the first type theories of personality. The second group of theories or the second perspective which is focusing on personality is the trait theories of personality. Now, these are the theories which view personality as a result of the internal characteristics that are again genetically based. So, trait theory says that personality can be conceptualized as a set of common traits or characteristic ways of behaving that every individual exhibits to some degree. Traits are tendencies to behave in relatively consistent and distinctive ways across situations. So, again that word situation is coming up here. So, they are characteristic ways of behaving. Traits. The groups of personality traits are known as personality factors or dimensions of personality. So, what the trait theory is proposing is that there are different kinds of traits which are present in an individual and when these traits combine together, one type of individual are is being formed. So, personality traits are different from person to person, but within an individual they are stable over time and place. So, again that feature of situation and time is coming here. So, personality traits are different from person to person, but within an individual they are stable over time and place. Now, Amongst the trait theories of personality, the one which has been acclaimed a lot is the Allport's theory. He had identified three types of traits. He talked about the cardinal traits, the central traits and the secondary traits. Now, among these cardinal, central and secondary, cardinal traits were the ones which were given the maximum importance by Allport. The second theory, the second trait theory which uh, needs to be mentioned here is the theory given by R.B. Cattell. He identified two types of traits. He says that there are source traits and there are surface traits. So, surface traits are the ones which are exhibited on the personality which are visible on the outer side and their root is the source trait. And his famous uh, classification was given the name of 16 PF theory. He even has devised a test also to understand the different personality types. Hence, Einzig, he suggested that there are three dimensions of personality, extroversion, introversion, emotional stability, neuroticism and psychoticism and based on these three dimensions he gave different kinds of personality types. So, that is all about trait theories of personality. Coming to the next classification or the next important and one of the most accepted theories of personality is the psychoanalytic perspective. 
This perspective emphasizes the importance of early childhood experiences and the unconscious mind. So the two catch points here are one, the early childhood experiences, and secondly, the unconscious mind. This perspective was created by Sigmund Freud. He had given his own theory in which he stressed the importance of early childhood events, the influence of the situations which are happening there, and predominantly the influence of the unconscious and the sexual instincts in the development of the personality. This personality is developing, this personality is forming. The influence of the early childhood experiences is the most important. So Freud focused on the unconscious mind, he focused on the sexual instincts and he gave his own theory. But there were other theorists who were disciples of Freud like Eric Erikson, Carl Jung, Alfred Adler and Karen Horney. They were neo-Freudians. They believed in the importance of the unconscious but disagreed with other aspect of Freud's theory because Freud focused a lot on the sexual instincts and these people were not in agreement of the same. One of the major psychosocial theory was given by Eric Erikson. He emphasized the social elements of the personality, the development, the identity crisis and how the personality is shaped over the course of the entire lifespan. So he also focused or he also stressed on the importance of early childhood experiences but still he said that over the time you develop your own kind of personality. Eric Erikson in fact gave a particular eight stage theory of life, his uh, theory is also known as the eight stage theory. The next important theory which needs to be understood here is the Carl Jung's theory. He focused on the concepts such as the collective unconscious, the archetypes and the psychological types. So there are people who classify Carl Jung's theory in that type theory of personality also. But it's focusing on the psychoanalytic perspective. So he's talking about the unconscious, he's talking about the archetypes and he's talking about the psychological types. So that was Carl Jung. The next theory is the Alfred Adler's theory. He believed that the core motive behind the personality involves striving for superiority. So there is this power thing which governs everybody or the desire to overcome challenges and move closer towards self-realization. So self-realization, desire to overcome the challenges and these were the things which were governing the people or which were shaping up the personality. This desire to achieve superiority stems from the underlying feelings of the inferiority that Adler believed were universal. So he believed or he held that everybody has certain kind of inferiority feelings, they are in universal and we all work to work on this inferiority feeling and get better or become better superior human beings. The next theory was given by Karen Horney. He focused on the need to overcome the basic anxiety, the sense of being isolated and alone in the world. She emphasized the societal and the cultural factors that also play a role in the personality development, including the importance of the parent-child relationship. Eric Erikson focused on early childhood relationship. Freud himself talked about early childhood experiences and even Karen Horney talked about the parent-child relationship. So that's a similarity in the psychoanalytic perspective that they all focus on the early experiences which an individual is facing. Now they regard an individual's action as ultimately being responsive. So that's all about psychoanalytic perspective of the personality. There were other theorists also like Sullivan also who gave these theories but we cannot discuss everybody out here. The next perspective is talking about the learning theories of the personality. Now these are the theories which regard an individual's action as ultimately being responses to the external stimuli. So they are focusing on observation, they are focusing on external environment, they are focusing on external stimuli and they are saying personality is the response to the external stimuli. Now behavioral theories suggest that personality is a result of interaction between the individual and the environment. So there is this individual and there is this environment and there is this interaction which is happening between the individual and the environment and the personality is shaped out of that interaction. Behavioral theorists study observable and measurable behaviors. Again, focus observable and measurable behaviors. They reject the theories that take internal thoughts and feelings into account. So they are rejecting that type theory, they are rejecting the trait theory, they are rejecting even uh, the psychoanalytic perspective because they are focusing on the environment. They are focusing on this interaction between the individual and the environment. And so uh, prominent among these behavioral theorists were B.F. Skinner, 
and John B. Watson. They both gave their own theories of personality. Now, social learning theory believes that personality and behavior are determined by an individual's cognition about the world around them. They emphasize that the importance of observational learning, self-efficacy, situational influences and cognitive processes. So, there is a lot of focus on self-efficacy, situational influences and cognitive processes. So, we need to understand among the ambit what are the learning theories focusing on. They are talking about the interaction between the individual and the environment. Albert Bandura was a major theorist of this kind of belief. She focused a lot on this. Now, coming down to another perspective of personality is the humanist theories of personality. And this, uh, this was a positive uh, note on among all the other perspectives which have been given because there the role of the individual is not very strong as compared to what the humanist theories of personality are saying. They argue that an individual's subjective free will minded, the free will is the most important determinant of the behavior. They focus on the psychological growth, they focus on free will and they focus on personal awareness. It takes a more positive outlook on the human nature and they are centering on how each person can achieve their individual potential. So they are saying that we all have our own potential and we all can reach to that potential particularly if we are aware of our own selves. Once we are aware of our own selves, we are definitely going to work in that direction and we are definitely going to be better human beings. So that was one positive way of thinking amongst all the other perspectives which we have uh, gone through till now. Carl Rogers was one of the major humanist theorists who gave a different theory of personality. He believed in the inherent goodness of the people and emphasized the importance of free will and psychological growth. Now see uh, it in the contrast, how Alfred Adler was seeing was that there is an inferiority complex amongst all of us and how Carl, uh, Carl Rogers is seeing is, he is saying there is this good human being which is inherent in all of us. And it is only that we need to have, sir, we need to work on our own selves, there need to be a need of free will and psychological growth and we all can be better individuals. He suggested that the actualizing tendency is the driving force behind human behavior. So he is saying that everybody works to better one's own self. Now this is what our Hindu mythology also says that we need to work on ourselves to enhance ourselves to become better human beings in psychological terms also, in behavioral terms also and as individuals also. Coming down to another theory, this was given by Abraham Maslow. He suggested that people are motivated by a hierarchy of needs. The most basic needs are centered on the things necessary for life such as food and water, roti, kapda or makan. That is the basic need of everybody and we all work towards that need. Once that need is met, only then we move towards the other needs. So once the need of food and water, the basic needs are met, we move towards the need of security, then there are social needs, then there are self-actualization needs. So there is this whole hierarchy of needs which are there and we behave or we exhibit our behavior in that pattern only. So his theory is not only included in the theory of uh, personality, his theory is also studied as a theory of motivation that what motivates people to behave. But as the people move up the hierarchy needs, they become centered on such things like self-esteem and self-actualization. So once we had done with our basic needs, we move on to other needs like self-esteem and self-actualization. Now these are the five perspectives on which give different kinds of theories on personality. We have studied the type theories, we have studied the trait theories, we have studied the psychoanalytic perspective, we have studied the learning theories and we have studied the humanist theories. I hope the discussion was useful for all of you to understand personality. It is always an intriguing topic, it is always an interesting topic and it gives an insight for all of us to understand each other better and understand one's own self better. Once going with the Carl Rogers view, only once we understand ourselves, we are going to be better human beings, we are going to be more evolved human beings and as teachers or as anybody as parents, as teachers, as anybody who is interacting with people or who is interacting with children, we need to understand what is personality and how the personality of an individual shapes up. Thank you.